Dot the middle of an apocalypse a group of survivors need to rely on the assist of a fallen angel to fight evil entities and make sure the destiny of humanity today we are going to recap the story of the 2010 film Legion days before Christmas an angel falls from the skies of Los Angeles and hides in an alley in which he removes his wings with the wound open the angel breaks into the police building and uses the first resource kit inside the bathroom to stitch up the hole in his back then goes to the warehouse to get a large quantity of guns now that he has sufficient weapons for an army the celestial being breaks through the wall and exits the building just as a police vehicle is driving down the street forcing the officials to get out of the car and approach the stranger unaware of what is going on the officials order him to drop his bags and one in every of them approaches him to handcuff him handiest to be amazed by way of the angel who turns him right into a hostage at that second the other policeman begins to warfare madly to he is possessed by some supernatural entity within the officer's body the spirit asks why the angel failed to observe his orders and he replies that from now on he's going to do as he pleases putting off and severe exchange of fire that ends with the two policemen eliminated in the suspect fleeing with the vehicle in a diner far away Bob is trying to get the TV to work while some of his customers are waiting for their cars to be repaired on the road in the middle of the desert a traveler named Kyle tries to read the map of the region when he arrives at Bob's restaurant making him realize how lost he is wanting to ask for directions the man approaches the diner and asks waitress Charlie who is taking a smoke break for help as soon as she sees where he should be the woman tells him that he has wandered for more than 80 kilometers and that he can use the phone if he wants to tell someone inside the restaurant Kyle approaches Bob to ask about the phone until he is interrupted by Howard a man who is traveling with his wife and daughter and wants to know when the mechanic is going to fix the car in the workshop Jeep is making a makeshift cradle for Charlie's baby when Bob shows up to check on Howard's car realizing that his son is working on something else the man is furious and says that Charlie is not his responsibility but even though he is not the child's father Jeep has been having nightmares about the girl and the baby for weeks and therefore feels a strong desire to protect them even though he understands his son's feelings Bob tells jeep to focus on his work and asks him to fix the car before nightfall heading to the diner to reassure howard straight away but as soon as the man enters jeep sees two huge sandstorms approaching one from each side something extremely unusual back at the tv bob keeps trying to get it to work until an image appears saying that they are in an emergency situation but as he has no further instructions the man asks his cook percy to check what is happening on the radio only to hear nothing but be at the back of the establishment Kyle is on the phone to his ex-wife when suddenly the signal also stops working leaving everyone inside the diner completely incommunicado concerned people begin to wonder what happened and Bob says he'll check with his brother to see if he knows anything but Kyle talks about the phone and Sandra begins to despair while Jeep is fixing the car in the workshop a little lady comes into the cafeteria and walks with her walker to one of the tables where she is attended to by Charlie after the waitress goes to the kitchen with the order the lady introduces herself as Gladys and starts talking to Sandra curious the woman tells her that there's no signal and asks if she knows anything about what's going on outside but the old lady only replies that it will all be over soon ending the conversation abruptly at this point Jeep finishes checking Howard's car and tells his father that he didn't find any mechanical problems so the error was probably in the central computer as they don't have the equipment to test it the man suggests calling a tow truck and taking the family to the next town but as they have no signal this is totally impossible at the tables Charlie takes the rare steak to Gladys who asks a lot of questions about the baby saying that it will burn soon furious Charlie tells the old woman to go to hell and walks away from the table leaving Gladys alone with her plate of raw steak uncomfortable with the situation Sandra tries to talk to the lady who starts swearing at her for no reason leaving leaving Howard furious to defend his wife the man goes to Gladys and orders her to apologize for what she said but instead the old woman gets shark teeth and jumps on his neck ripping out Howard's jugular with a single bite in a panic Percy throws the frying pan which breaks Gladys neck but the woman remains standing as if nothing had happened and runs to the window climbing the walls and walking on the ceiling as if she were an insect desperate Bob grabs his shotgun and starts shooting at the elderly spider woman 
but ends up missing every shot and is knocked out by her dropping his gun at Jeep's feet frightened the man picks up the shotgun and aims it at Gladys but even with her advancing towards him he doesn't have the courage to shoot and ends up being saved by Kyle who shoots her three times with his pistol now. That Gladys is neutralized Sandra rushes to her husband and asks Kyle and Percy to help stop the bleeding and take him to the hospital but as they approach the dust cloud Audrey Howard's daughter notices some buzzing and realizes that several flies are entering through the air conditioning because the sandstorm is actually a large swarm of flies unable to move forward the group returns to the diner with the cloud of flies and goes inside to decide what they will do with Gladys body deciding to put her outside for safety as soon as the flies are gone they carry the body to the parking lot when they notice a police car approaching happy Bob and Kyle breathe a sigh of relief until Jeep realizes it's an LAPD car leaving everyone confused afraid that it might be someone else like Gladys Bob takes the gun and points it at the stranger as soon as he gets out of the car ordering him to show his teeth to see if they are like those of the possessed old woman after confirming that he is a normal person Bob asks the stranger his name and discovers that he is the angel Miguel in disbelief the man points his gun at the stranger and orders him to tell the truth but he is easily disarmed by the archangel who points the shotgun at its owner's head after a few 10 seconds Miguel says he has no time to lose and hands the gun back to Bob saying he'll need it quite mysteriously the fallen angel takes the guns from the trunk and goes around handing them out to everyone in the restaurant especially Charlie who he says should stay out of trouble either even though they don't know what's going on Bob and the others noticed something approaching and rushed to the diner to set up barricades at all the exits making it difficult for other possessed people to get in during the night each of the survivors is at their post when the power is completely cut leaving them in total darkness knowing that the creatures are nearby Miguel takes the men to keep watch on the roof and leaves Jeep below to look after the women after a while of waiting the ice cream cart approaches and Kyle lets his guard down thinking it's harmless but when he gets out of the vehicle the ice cream man starts stretching wildly running with his stumpy limbs at the people on the roof ready for combat Miguel unlocks his gun and starts shooting at the smiling ice cream man but just when they think it's finally over dozens of vehicles approach from the road and the survivors start shooting wildly managing to blow up several cars along the way on the other side of the highway Miguel sees even more cars coming from the opposite direction and goes to the other end of the roof to blow them up with his bazooka suddenly the possessed come out of their cars and start walking towards the gas station while the roof team tries to prevent them from reaching the windows but one of them manages to get through and breaks into the restaurant to get Howard desperate the women grab his arms and do everything they can to save him but because of this Charlie is almost taken with him and Miguel is forced to go downstairs ripping off the entity's arm with a knife and saving the waitress from being captured with two rifles the man starts firing at the possessed who suddenly retreat just preparing for the next attack as soon as things settle down Miguel fights with Charlie for trying to help and repeats that she shouldn't play the hero making Bob suspect that he's hiding something cornered by the humans the angel explains that all this is happening because God has lost faith in humanity and that thanks to this they are now going through an apocalypse curious Kyle asks what they are out there and Miguel replies that they are normal people who have been possessed by the dogs of heaven at the behest of God but since he still has hope for humans he refused to obey orders and came to earth to help hopeful Audrey asks if Miguel has come to protect them and he replies that he has actually come to keep Charlie safe Asher baby is the only hope of saving humanity thinking it was some kind of joke the waitress laughs until she realizes that the angel is still quite serious frightened the girl tells him that she is eight months pregnant and Kyle asks if they will have to face the possessed for another month but Miguel replies that it won't be necessary and that the baby will be born prematurely until that happens they must focus on protecting the child and only then will they have a chance of surviving the apocalypse so all they have to do is keep watch until the time comes after a tedious night Sandra wakes up the next morning hearing how it screams and goes to the door to see what's going on finding her husband nailed to an inverted cross in his body full of blisters and burns desperate the woman starts to remove the barricade in front of the door and Kyle tries to stop her but ends up being thrown backwards and hitting his head on the wall at the noise Audrey also wakes up and tries to convince her mother not to go out but the woman refuses 
refuses to listen and finally opens the door running outside to help her husband right behind her Percy man just to hold Sandra and turns to protect her just as the bubbles in how its body explode releasing a large amount of acid that melts the cook's back considering Sandra risk the group decides to tie her to a chair while Audrey looks after her but the woman begins to blame everything on her own daughter and says that if she behaved they would never have Tomu hearing. What she says Kyle decides to take Audrey away and asks for her help in finding a radio signal and after a long time searching they finally manage to find a frequency paying attention to the message they discover that other people are forming groups in some places and that in Red Ridge a new squad of survivors is forming as soon as she hears the name of the place Charlie realizes that it's just over an hour away and suggests going there by car but Miguel says that they can't be on the road when the baby arrives because it will be dangerous thoughtful Charlie goes into the kitchen and starts talking to Jeep about how she didn't want to have a child revealing that she even went to the clinic to have it removed but when it was her turn she got scared and ran away promising herself that she would come back someday obvious this never happened and Charlie decided that she would give the baby to a family but now that she knows that the child is the only one capable of saving the world she doesn't know what else to do trying to help Jeep tells her that she's strong and that he'll help her with whatever she needs but Charlie isn't at all grateful and begins to humiliate him asking if he doesn't have someone else to flatter while this discussion is going on Kyle and Audrey are watching the roof when the power suddenly comes back on making them believe that it's all over however Miguel tells them that this is not the case and that they should prepare to continue fighting outside a van. Approaches the diner and both Kyle and Audrey ready their guns but soon realize that they are a father and son looking for help and let their guard down wanting to fill up the man gets out of his car and goes to the gas station without realizing that hundreds of vehicles are coming from all sides from the terrace Kyle notices that the man hasn't seen what's going on and shoots near his feet to get him back into the vehicle but he ends up being run over before he can get in with the child in the lap of the possessed Kyle jumps off the roof and begins to advance towards the boy while shooting at the possessed but when he picks him up in his arms he discovers that he is also possessed and that it was all just a trap to help him Audrey jumps off the terrace and starts shooting at everyone until she reaches Kyle but she runs out of ammunition and has to lock herself inside the van to stay safe leaving her companion alone to be eliminated outside inside the diner Charlie asks Miguel to come and help her and says that if he doesn't do anything she'll go there herself to keep the baby safe the angel agrees to go in her place and takes two rifles to advance against the possessed using the guns and the fuel from the hose to set fire to the minivan he manages to get everyone to move away and pulls Audrey out of the vehicle running back to the diner before the fuel pump explodes but while they were gone the hooded child managed to get in and now has a knife ready to eliminate Charlie possessed. The boy rushes at the waitress and manages to cut her belly but ends up hitting himself with the knife and loses both his thumbs giving Charlie the opportunity to kick him away at that moment Miguel manages to reach the girl and starts looking for the child who disappears before his eyes while he's trying to find the creature the diner's power cuts out and everyone starts looking for the boy but because of the darkness they are taken by surprise by one of the monsters that jumps on Bob's back forcing Miguel to throw the boy away while Jeep finishes him off as soon as the boy leaves the scene Charlie goes into labor while a trumpet-like sound echoes throughout the diner worried Miguel says that something dangerous is approaching and pressures Charlie to give birth soon with a lot of effort the woman manages to have the baby and refuses to hold it leaving Audrey to take it to Sandra who pretends to apologize while trying to untie her wrists inside the cafeteria Miguel says that now the possessed can can't do anything against the child and that's why God has sent someone who can the angel Gabriel knowing that humans don't stand much a chance against angels Miguel says that they should get out of there as soon as possible and Charlie asks for the baby to run away but Sandra manages to break free at the last second and takes the boy from her daughter's arms saying that she will give him to Gabriel in exchange for salvation furious Charlie orders Sandra to return her son in the woman insists that she will hand him over but when Gabriel arrives she ends up getting distracted and Miguel shoots her forcing Jeep to jump to catch the child in midair with no time to talk Gabriel uses his spiked club to try and hit the boy and Bob shoots at the angel to help but the celestial
single being manages to dodge the bullets quite easily and slashes the human's abdomen with his wings pushing him over the stove seeing the scene Jeep tries to run to help his father but ends up being stopped by Miguel who leaves him with the mission of taking the child away handing him the keys to the car and asking him to learn to read the instructions even though he doesn't know what he's talking about Jeep grabs the women in the child and runs outside where all the possessed are keeping their heads down allowing them to walk to the car and escape without having to fight on the other hand Miguel stays behind and tries to convince his brother to have faith in the human race but the creature doesn't seem to be willing and begins to attack him starting a battle between angels with a gun one. Miguel starts firing at Gabriel who manages to fend off the projectiles with his metallic wings advancing on his former partner and trying to hit him in the legs with his club after dodging Miguel ends up cornered against the wall and almost has his face pierced by the spikes but manages to push Gabriel away with a punch and throws the TV at his head even though he is no longer an angel Miguel manages to do well in the fight and knocks his opponent down a few times but Gabriel proves to be superior and manages to cut through his abdomen just as he did with Bob even with the wound the former archangel manages to fight back and begins a succession of punches and kicks jumping on Gabriel's back to squeeze his neck but the celestial entity manages to grab his club and uses a secret blade to pierce both their hearts since he is no longer a divine being Miguel feels all the damage from the wound and falls to the ground lifeless his body turning into light and mysteriously disappearing with Miguel. Elimination all his tattoos are on Jeep's arm and he finally realizes that these are the instructions but as he still can't read them he continues driving to Red Ridge in search of help in the diner Gabriel says goodbye to his brother and walks to the door to go after the other humans but Bob is still alive and has taken advantage of their distraction to open the gas valves using his lighter to blow up the diner with the angel still inside unaware that his father has sacrificed himself Jeep continues driving to Red Ridge when Gabriel appears on the roof of the car without any injuries wanting to knock him down Jeep begins to shoot upwards with the intention of hitting him but the angel manages to stay on the roof and uses his hand to stop the human breathing to free himself Jeep accelerates to the limit of the car and breaks sharply to make Gabriel fly away but he ends up driving off the road and flips the car several times causing Audrey to lose her existence in the process alone. The couple continue walking until they are stuck by Gabriel who manages to knock Jeep down with a single punch to finish his mission the angel is going after Charlie and orders her at hand over the kid but just as he is about to put off them Michael reappears with his wings and reveals that he has regained his position as Archangel with his powers restored he picks up his sword and manages to strike Gabriel down with one blow but refuses to remove his companion and allows him to leave alive now. That things are calmer Miguel says that Jeep is the real protector of the chosen one and that it is he who need to take them to Red Ridge finally the angel leaves and leaves Jeep and Charlie alone with the tough mission of raising the chosen one and finding a way to shop humanity if you want thanks for watching please like share and subscribe.